to turn on the uh, uh, the recording here again. We will get back to any logic and we'll do some touch up work here. Uh, and there's sort of three major things that shouldn't take us that long to do, um, but should should um, allow us to um, gain some uh, some more meaningful output uh, from this model. So the first thing uh, is that you may have noticed when you're running this model um, that we had a scale difference. Yes. Oh. Oh, that's okay. It must be set still to HDMI. Uh, so let's try this. Yeah. Uh, good. Okay. Thank you. That's great. Um, so we, we may have noticed that there was a scale difference here. Um, so people were really, really quickly getting to work, um, and really, really quickly getting to community resources, really, really quickly getting to school. The, they, their commutes were a flash. And I'd like to show you about why this is and, um, uh, and put in place some corrections for that. Uh, so you may have noticed that um, at the top of each element within a, a model, for example, if we get a person, there's a, uh, there's a sort of meter stick of sorts that a scale for distance. And uh, that distance scale indicates uh, the, the uh, interpretation in terms of distances associated with the space in this grid. And we, you may recall that uh, we had set individuals in this model to move at something like 0.5 meters per second. But you'll notice that each square here um, uh, is, uh, is in fact very, represents very small distances. This model, this distance here is 10 meters uh, within the model. And that is consistent not only for person, but also for, uh, for example, for what's interpreted. Um, oh, okay, so now we have a somewhat, somewhat different scale here. That's that's kind of interesting. Uh, oh, it's just because I'm zoomed in here. That's all. Uh, no, no, it is actually off. Okay, so we're going to set these all to be more consistent and to have somewhat bigger distances involved because right now, essentially, the school is within 10 meters of your home, et cetera. So we're going to set these to have a much larger distance. And, and we're going to start with main and do it for, for all of these. So we'll go up to main and we can select this bar here. And uh, we're going to make it correspond this distance and uh, correspond to, uh, I think we'll make it something on the order of one kilometer. Um, so the ruler length will correspond to one kilometer. Okay, there we go, one kilometer. Now, we've done that for Maine, and you'll notice that, that uh, the, the visual here kind of disappeared a little bit. And if you were to scroll, if you were to zoom in here on this this um, uh, cross, uh, you'll notice that there is still in there some very, very small icons because now houses are very small compared to the one kilometer ranges. You can see they're way down there, they're tiny, which means we can barely see them. We've changed the scale such that the scale for these houses are almost invisible right now. And frankly, just as on a map, we're not interested in having the icons be super, super small. We want to be able to see where houses are, where workplaces are. We're not going to take advantage of this, you know, their their particular capacity 
um, realistically, but we do want to be able to see them clearly on the map. So we're going to go from main where we, we set this scale um, to be consistent, and I'm going to zoom back out here. And we're going to use a similar scale scale for all the other components here. Um, so we're going to go and we're gonna say the ruler length for community place for the first one here is one kilometer as well, okay? Um, and that for the home is similarly one kilometer, okay? Um, so now instead of being mere meters or tens of meters apart from each other, we already did it for main, we're doing it for person. Instead of being, you know, tens of meters apart from each other, uh, things will be um, large fractions of a kilometer, even a kilometer apart. So that's for person, and we're just going, and, and it's time to make the donuts for each of these. It's a bit of boilerplate, but just making sure our scales are comparable. So we can both have reasonable transit times, and distances on the one hand, and so that we can actually see the houses and the schools and the workplaces, et cetera, here. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, and having done that, we could run the model now, and we'll find that the transit times um, take longer. It, it looks every bit like before, but we're seeing you know, roughly a kilometer, say, between this home and this workplace. And it is being walked, that kilometer. And you can see that they're more slowly walking to their workplace. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Your yeah. model is not visible in the Zoom. It's not, not visible in the Zoom. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I thought I shared my whole screen, but it's weird. Yeah. Okay. Um, is visible now, I take yeah, it? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, so in short, we changed it so that the distances are larger and people spend more time in transit. Now, why why is how long they spend in transit important here? Can anyone say? Well, for health reasons, why is that important here? Model of asthma. Um, they're going to be out and getting exposed to the environment, I mean, not necessarily just the outside environment, school and different mm -hmm. other places. So this tends to more going to affect them in terms of exposure to the allergens or the treatment. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So we're going to have, um, in their transit, they'll be more exposed to the, you know, their commute every day, more exposed to the minus 30 degree weather. Or, or variously as we present it in a way that might trigger asthma. Um, and there may be some uh, some additional effects as well. So so that's one thing we want to get to get right. So that's that's one sort of completing the thought with that. Um, next, we want to go and so this is version five of the model. Um, I'll be posting it after I make these changes. Um, the second thing we want to do is we want to have some sort of outcome indicator. Right now, we have people entering an asthmatic bout, um, and we want to get in place some sort of record of the number of bouts people have suffered, the duration of bouts that they've suffered cumulatively, to have some sense of the health burdens involved. Um, now, to do this, um, I am going to be adding some variables like we did yesterday, but they're actually going to record something about the length of time they spent as well in that state. But before I do this, I want to put into place a nice innovation um, that, so Wade and I over lunch were discussing ways of capturing the fact that people stay longer in a bout of asthma before it clears, if there's um, very cold weather around, or if there are allergens around, uh, if they're very upset, or if um, there's uh, if there's uh, very poor air quality, they'll 
they'll not only be, have it triggered, but they're more likely to stay in it. And we talked about a couple of ways of capturing this, and Wade, Wade pointed out a uh, very parsimonious way um, of, of capturing it, which I hadn't considered, but was, was uh, very, very sweet. So it's also going to be an opportunity to introduce you to hierarchical state charts. It's depicted here as Wade has, has shown it, and I'm going to endeavor to explain it to you. So we have to tune this up a little bit. First of all, the recovery from the bout, instead of being four times per hour, which means that they'll leave on average in one quarter of an hour, one divided by four or 15 minutes. I'm going to put it, that's the nature of the, the mathematics involved. If you, if you have a rate of 10, then you'll tend to leave it, then you'll be leaving on average in one tenth of the unit time. If your rate is five, you'll be leaving on average in one fifth of, of a unit of time. If your rate is one, Per hour, you'll leave on average within one unit of time, one hour. Um, here, we have, it's four, so we'll leave on average within one quarter, one fourth of an hour. And uh, uh, we will instead convert this to a timeout, where the timeout will be 15 minutes, okay? Minutes. Now, really, that should probably be a... Uh, it should probably be a uh, parameter. So I'm going to go to main and add it as a parameter to main. I'm going to go to main and I will pursuant to, uh, to the requests earlier. I'm going to zoom in some and I'm going to add length of uh, triggered asthmatic bout. Okay, and I'm sorry, it's it's not not short. Triggered. Don't <laughs> copy the correct spelling. It's not the other. Asthmatic bout. There we go. Um. So so actually, this should say duration, not length. Duration, duration of. It's more precise. Dur duration implies time. Um. So I'll say duration um in hours. Um. Okay, in hours. Duration of triggered asthmatic bout in hours. <laughs> okay, I know it's a bit of a mouthful. If you just want to say duration of asthmatic bout in hours, it would also be fine. And I'll say it's 0.25 hours by extension. Okay. Uh, and so I just added that to main as an assumption of the model. Duration of triggered asthmatic bout in hours, made it 0.25 on average, if we don't change it. And now in person, their recovery time in hours will be that given by that parameter, main dot, if you want to tell me what to put now? Duration, thank you, yeah. Duration of triggered asthmatic count in hours. Okay, there we go. It's a timeout. They'll leave in a time. Okay, that's step one. Step two is we're going to put a hierarchical state around this. This is this is really quite clever, and it's going to teach you something about a thing or two about asthmatic about asthmatic states about uh, hierarchical states. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this and um, I'm gonna need Wade as a wingman again. Um, so I'm going to. Go drag this uh, to be nice and big. And I think I should be able to go drag, take these that already exist. So I, I dragged in a state. What I did is I dragged it and I dragged it so it wasn't overlapping with this. And then I made it real big like, okay? And now I should be able to copy this and I'm gonna do cut. By my saving it. And then I'm going to go to the state and put paste, and it failed. Wade, uh, help me. Uh, yeah, you might have to drag them in rather than. Okay, Maybe you might have to drag it in. Let's try that. Okay, yeah, this looks very helpful. I'm going to drag it in. Here we go. Okay, 
and I'm not sure. Oh gosh, it it kind of mangled it, didn't it? It it it, it engaged in mangling behavior. So we'll just hitch it up uh, more properly. Here we go, and we we're going to hitch this guy up um, to here. There we go. And actually, sorry, this one by Wade's clever design. This one is now going to start out here, and it's going to come in to this uh, to this state of coughing very particularly. There we go. And I'll explain that in a minute. And that will be called, I called it triggered bout, but I'll call it triggering bout. And so it's it's triggering about, and it could be occurring when they're normal breathing, or it could be occurring when they're already coughing and wheezing, and you get another triggering that further worsens it. Okay. Now, we're still not done. We're getting close, but we're not done. There needs to be in an, what's called an initial state pointer. Every hierarchical state needs an initial state pointer that says where to start in that state. There we go. So I, I put it there. We dragged in an initial state pointer for this hierarchical state. So when we come into this hierarchical state, unless we're coming into a very particular state as here, we'll enter in, uh, into the state normal breathing. And this state will be called um, uh, asthma. I'm, I'm not quite sure what to uh, uh, asthma state, I'll call it. Um, it. It really doesn't have a very nice name, I think. And we're going to hitch it up, hitch this to go to that, to go to that state like that. Now, maybe I'll explain this. this the idea here is that, look, things trigger asthma. And those things that trigger asthma can either initiate an asthmatic attack, bringing you from normal to coughing. Any of the states within this hierarchical state are subject to, are eligible to transition um, from this overall state. The fact that this is a is a uh, transition out of the entire state, that the the super state, as it were, um, means it applies for either of these states. You could leave and come to here. So if you're normal breathing, you can come here by being triggered by about mm, um, uh, coming into coughing or wheezing. Or if you're in coughing and wheezing already, it can be prolonged um, by coming out and coming back in. That, that It can be triggered that it continues. And that's really what is represented by that. Um, it can be prolonged or it can resolve, um, excuse me, it can be uh, prolonged or, um, or it can be initiated, um, uh, either one by this triggering, by this asthmatic conditions. And after 15 minutes, if you're not further triggered, you tend to recover. That's the basic idea here. It's a very clever design. It requires squinting of one's eyes a bit, but the idea is that your coughing can be worsened, either prolonged or brought on in the first place by conditions around you. And it's the same condition broadly that, that prolong it and get another you know, impetus for your bout continuing or that bring you in there. And so we have that as a single transition that can function both to initiate it or prolong it where you're here and since you're in this asthmatic state, asthma state, you could you could come back in here and this, this timeout transition will be reset. So you'll go out again. Okay, so that was a little bit of that. Any any question about that clever design? I'm, I'm hoping, you know, um, uh, that my explanation might've offered some benefit, but is there anyone who wants to talk more about this design and how that works? The idea is we don't have to have two different things, one to prolong it and one to come in. We can capture the same basic logic with the idea that triggering is something that can prolong or bring it on. That, that's the dynamic hypothesis here. Any questions about that? We're just about done here. Okay, we're, we're, we're 
going to do just two more things and we will be set up. Um, and I'm going to ask Wade to muse about a certain thing while I'm taking on these final bits of action. Wade, mm -hmm. could you muse about how I can inquire what is the active state in a state chart at a given time? Not, not whether I'm in a certain state, but get the name of the active state at a given okay. time. And can I get the name of it as a name? That's what I want you to, to muse about, okay? Um, I have my reasons. Okay, so we want to keep track now of the number of bouts of asthma that someone has suffered, okay? Are we okay with that? Okay, great. So we're going to the number of the number of triggers that they've su suffered. So we're going to go we're going to go to the palette for any for agent and we're going to drag in a variable so called count of um triggers for asthmatic bouts. Okay? I think we'll leave it uh, as as that. Um, I was thinking about separately totaling up the amount of time, but but this is pretty close to it because each of them lasts for fifteen minutes um, if it extends its full length. And is this going to be a double, an int, a bool? It's a count. So what will it be? An int indeed, and I'll start as zero. You notice that this is in a person because it's recording for that person the number of bouts that they've experienced, right? They have particular circumstances experienced. Okay. Okay, so where does this need to be increased? What mechanism in the model will increase this? Can anyone say? Where in the model would it increase this count of triggers for asthmatic bouts? Where, where are triggers represented in the model that a trigger is firing? Asthma state chart, and which particular thing here shows a trigger happening? Triggering bout, there we go. So all that's gonna do is it's going to count, we're going to increase count of triggers for asthmatic bout, that variable we just added, we're going to increase it by one. And how do we do this? What do we write? Do we write a question mark? Do we write a question mark, question mark? Do we write a, X sorry? Plus, plus, indeed, it's plus, plus. Plus, plus. Your knowledge of Java is getting plus, plus. Um, okay, do we need a semicolon? Not right, you do, because we're saying do this, increase it by one. Okay, that's it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, every person keeps track of the number of triggering bouts they've had. Um, next, we're just going to complete the thought. Now we want to total that up over the entire population. How do we do that over the entire population? How do we how do we do that? We could do it in a population what begins with S. Statistic. Yes. Okay. So we could go to the statistics and we could say count of asthmatic bouts across across population and. Will this be a count, a sum, or an average, or min, or max? It is, we saw it yesterday. It's tempting to say count, but it's actually a what? Sum. We're just summing it up across the people, right? Okay. Okay, and so what are we going to sum up? Can anyone say? Each person is called item, so we're going to sum up what? Item dot, guess what? Count what? Count, yeah. And, and, and for some reason, it's not doing autocomplete of me. So I'm going to go and go get its name. What, what was its name? Its name was 
count of triggers for asthmatic bouts. That's what its name was. And I'm going to go go put it back in that where that statistic is. I, I unfortunately um, sort of copied it. There we are. Count of trigger of asthmatic bouts. It's a sum up across the population. Now, you could imagine if we had another hour, I would make people divided. I would have income levels and air quality in homes would depend on income levels. And we could look at how asthmatic bouts, uh, how asthmatic bouts, the, the histogram of asthmatic bouts was different for lower income versus higher income individuals. Does that sound familiar? Like yesterday? Or we could look at that graph of income versus count of asthmatic bouts, right? Um, and see how that differs. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to plot this out. I'm cutting some things that uh, we could otherwise do, histograms and all that sort of stuff. But we will put in a plot, a final plot here, uh, which is going to be a time plot of, of asthmatic bouts. So this is going to be um, as, asthma asthma burden time plot okay time plot and it's going to be um we're going to display count of asthmatic bouts across population that's going to be across the entire population and how would i call that who knows how to compute the count of asthmatic bouts across the population right now at a given time who knows how to compute that the just did it, right? Yeah, the statistic. So all we do is we call that statistic population dot count of asthmatic bouts across population. Why does it have just begin print and end print? Because what? It doesn't need any information to do to do its job. The sign function needs an angle to do its job. When we add things to a data set, it means a pair of items. If you're recording pairs, like income and number of counts of infection, this doesn't need anything to do with job. The statistic can just performance job and count. Okay, that's it. That's it. Um, okay, so let's, um, I will just make sure it's a happy camper. Well, that's interesting. Um, so let's make sure it's a happy camper here. And it looks like it is not reporting that it's a happy camper. I'm gonna to go to the problems window and go see if there's something brewing. No, that's interesting. Hey, wait, have you ever seen this before? Check it out. Um, there's there's nothing. Uh, you might have to yeah. close it. And... Open it again. Okay. It, I've, I've seen this, but save and close and exit any logic okay 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 i I've, I've seen worse yes um okay and we will start any logic again and let's um uh okay so any any logic here we go now sometimes yeah, sometimes it may start start behaving a little bit oddly, and so it's a good thing to to close it out. It's been running for a couple of days now, and it may have may have encountered some issues. Oh, this is personal. Uh, yeah, this is personal learning. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. There we go. Um, an error has occurred. Look at that wave. Okay. That that's really um interesting uh okay let's go see if any logic is running forgive me i'm just gonna see is any logic still running i don't see any indication that it's running okay yeah nothing nothing okay um so uh oops um any logic so any logic yes yes open okay we're gonna try this again Okay. Okay. Looks like we may be. Oh, wait. 
So yes, Narges. I didn't close the model. Uh, okay, so you're saying that I didn't close the model. So why would that cause a problem? Oh, I, I see. So you're saying that it's having trouble loading the model. Okay, well, that that's that that could be a very valuable insight. I'm going to that that's distressing that this is occurring, but uh, I love hearing this theory because it gives us a path forward. So we will we will go and seek to investigate this. Okay, so I'm going to go over to where I saved that model, and I will. Hide that model, Nargis, um, like Nargis says. Well, what am I doing? Okay, uh, so I will rename this to be any logic version five hidden. I think this is what you're saying. Is that right, Nargis? It, sorry, change the. Okay, uh, no, it's still still occurring. Okay, this is. This so is not another thing you might attempt. Yes. Okay. Uh, go to your go to your phone. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and look for the any logic. Okay. Dot any logic PLE. Yeah. And then just delete the workspace. <laughs> okay. Metadata. Delete the the. No, no, just delete the old workspace eight point eight. Okay, just delete. Okay, I'm going to call it hidden. Yeah, that's a okay. safer thing to try. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the old horse knows the way. Uh, yeah, let's, let's try this. Okay, and it's happy, and the world is bright, and the sun is shining, and the waves are crashing on the shore. Great. Okay. Um, so uh yeah uh okay um that's that's very interesting um but it's good to know how to foil that and i appreciate narges and wade's uh insights on that that was very helpful i'm gonna go open that model again and we are going to try building it and making sure it's a happy camper here so that was that was mighty Mighty interesting. Um, yes, it built it built fine. I'm going to save it as version six and post it um, after I run it and make sure it's running okay. Here we go. Okay, there we go. I'm going to run it. Make sure this is uh, exhibiting behavior that is not truculent, uh, and we will. Okay, so so did I not run it? Okay, let's try that again. Okay, yeah, it's it's preparing to run it, and here we go. Good, good, good. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Let's let's go run this thing. Okay, time moves on. Count of asthmatic bouts across the population rising. Why do we see these kind of curvilinear? Shapes. Any any idea? Like, why do we see it suddenly go up, and then kind of plateau, and then suddenly go up? Any any thoughts on that? Outside. Yeah, outside exposes them to the minus thirty degree weather. I would conjecture. Now we could test that hypothesis by copying the simulation. We could paste it in. So I copied the. So I call this baseline, and I'm going to. Say so baseline involves anyone remember what the temperature was outside? 30. <laughs> Minus 30. Um, okay. And now we'll change it to be summer weather, right? <laughs> okay. And how about we change it to be plus 30? Um <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say 20. 20. Our province is a fine province for most of the summer when the smoke isn't here. 
from flyers. Okay, um, so let's let's go see if 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 that might hang water. Um, it it does seem that it's less uh, less pronounced features, right? Um, there is still maybe a bit with that, but uh, less bad. Um, uh, we could also examine, you know, if we have uh, greater uh, outdoor, uh, poor outdoor air quality. So here I'm going to right click on baseline, copy, and I'll say, um, uh, so we'll have adverse um, uh, outdoors air quality, and we will change this outdoor air quality to be Point four, reflecting smoky conditions from the wildfires or something like that. And we can go and run this. Well, it's unlikely when it's minus 30 right, that you're going to have. Uh, so you got to thank the winter for some things. Um, so really, this should only be in summer. So I'm sorry, I'll, I'll make it when it's 20 degrees out and point four air quality. So it's it's uh, pretty pretty smoky. Maybe I should have made it even worse air quality for the sake of showing this. Here we go. And well, yeah, there's uh, perhaps uh, a little bit, but it's it's not as pronounced. If I did air quality 1.1, maybe it would it would be even um, even maybe it would be somewhat more pronounced. But in any case, um, we have. Uh, we have different stressors when people are outside for for air quality, and yeah, you could see it a little bit here. These sort of bouts where it it leaps up a bit, I think, when they're outside. Uh, okay, um, so uh, this model has been uh, interesting. I asked Wade if he could, um, if there was a function that would show um, the state that's currently active in a state chart. Yes. And, and what is that? It's, uh, maybe mm -hmm. I'll just paste it in the chat. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you could do something like that. Um, okay. Uh, um, ability state chart to get active, simple state. Good. Open, close it down. Awesome. Name, open, close it okay. Um, and that'll I, give you a string with the name. Indeed. Of the state. Indeed. Indeed. Now, if I had more time, I would do this in a really slick way and have a graph that shows by as a histogram where asthmatic bouts are occurring outdoors, indoor, in transit to school, in transit to work, in transit, you know, one coming home while in school, in workplace, at home. I think just to give the flavor of that, when there's a triggering bout, I'll say, and this is a very important thing to note in any logic. I will print out, this is how you do it. You do trace LN. I will say, I, my name for myself is this, experienced an, an asthmatic, asthmatic bout, um, uh, uh, experienced a trigger, uh, for an asthmatic bout uh, when I was in state and I'm going to put this formula. I'll, I'll paste this all into the um, into the chat so everyone can get it. Uh, it's but basically we're going to be printing out uh, this information uh, here and I'll, I'll make sure it it builds here. Um, Yes. Okay. Here we go. Um, so, uh, right. So what's happening here is that I am going to print out when I get a triggering of my bout, I'm going to print out, hey, I, I'm going to use my agent name, experience a trigger for this bout when I was in this state name in the mobility state chart. So it's going to actually print out I am experiencing a asthmatic bout in school. I am experiencing one at home. I'm experiencing one when in transit to school. I'm experiencing one while in the community. That sort of thing. It'll print this out. Okay. And 
that's kind of a, a poor person's approach to capturing this information. What I would really like to do is to accumulate a histogram. And if anyone wonders where, where this idea could go, um, I'll note, for example, our COVID-19 model for the province does keep track of where infections are occurring. So we can look at, oh, not only the number of infections we expect, but where which of them are occurring at home or workplace or at school. And as you can imagine, that's very useful if you have intervention measures in place, because you can look, we're, we're putting in place um, a work, work from home recommendation. How does that change where infections are occurring in the population? So let's go, let's go run this. It gives you the flavor of it without actually completing the thought fully. We're gonna run the baseline here and uh, we, will, we will see here that as we run it and things happen, you can see there's this console. And when you print things out using this trace LN thing, it goes to the console. And this is what the console is saying. Like I experienced a asthmatic bout when I was in transit to home or transit to work. It says who experienced it, and we can print out when, and for that matter, this these experienced it at home. Um, some some experience it in transit to work. Occasionally, you'll get one at work. A lot seems to be occurring at home here, but some in transit outside, etc. Okay, so we're actually keeping track here of where things are happening, where bad things are happening. And with interventions, say, and improved school air quality, or with interventions, say, on, you know, enhancing the, uh, uh, the uh, availability of, uh, uh, of good, good quality air filters for home or what have you, um, you might be able to look at how does that change the balance of where asthmatic accounts, um, uh, asthmatic bouts might be might be triggered. So just a little bit on that. Um, this model has come a long way. I thank you for your patience while we are exploring it, and I'm going to now post post this model, and we will uh, just offer a few comments on. Okay. Um, no, I want this on the um, GIS front. Okay, models version six. Good, there we go. Okay. Asthma mobility. Okay. Um, any questions about that from folks in the room or folks remote? I'm eager to get to our incubator projects. Um, any Any questions? about that. Okay, so hearing none, I'm going to 